Hi, I'm Ken Shirley. I'm a percussionist from Canada. On today's video, I'm going to show you some trance rhythms for the Rick. I have the Rick here. This is my Cooperman custom Rick that I love. You can play these trance-like rhythms on any drum that has got jingles. So I have this Turkish instrument here. Arabs would call this larger version, it's like a larger version of a Rick. They may call this Mizar. Uh, the Turks that I know generally call any jingled frame drum, they would call it tef. I also have this Cooperman hybrid tambourine. I've taken some of the some of the jingles out. This is one of those drums that you can have removable jingles. And so I have just a minimum number of jingles. So I'll play this rhythm on all these different drums and give you a sense of what it might sound like. Now this rhythm uses a technique I don't use very often in my own playing, but some people ask me about it and I thought this would be a nice chance to slow it down. It's a lateral side to side shaking rhythm, okay? So in order to facilitate the playing, rather than holding on with your thumb on one of the jingles itself, just put your hand between two sets of jingles and try to balance the instrument. This, because of all of this sort of lateral shaking movement, it's also important to um, make sure that your arm is relaxed. So what I like to do is to just center my shoulders and I feel the weight of the drum basically across from my belly. So I'm holding it lower. I'm, I'm not holding it up at chest height. It's sort of down here. I find that it's easier for me to play this type of rhythm and to sustain the energy over a period of time. The dominant hand is doing a very simple pattern. It's just three dooms and a pa. So dum, 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 pa. Dum, 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 pa. And because I'm playing the rick, typically you would do a dum with the index finger. You can also, for this rhythm, do a thumb. Dum. Okay. It's a shake where you turn the, the drum quickly in and back out again. So by in, I mean you rotate it towards the center of your body or you rotate it towards your main playing hand and back. Okay, so it's in, out. And on the out, that's when you're gonna line up with either the dum or the pa. So the drum comes to meet your hand at that point, okay? And there's two shakes. It's very hard to do this slow, by the way. Okay. So it's like that dum, shake, combination of a shake and a dum. That's the essential movement. Now, you'll have to see depending upon the size of your drum and the weight of the jingles, you'll you'll have to balance, you know, the top of the drum might, might start to tilt. The idea is that you keep the drum as vertical as possible and just do this lateral motion back and forth, shaking it. You're also, the shake meets the dum, or it meets the pa. I slow it way down. Dum shake dum, dum shake pa. Dum shake dum, dum shake pa. Dum shake dum, dum shake pa. You want to try to keep it as crisp as possible. You'll you'll get some extra sounds once it's up to speed. Should hear a nice clean shaka shaka. Okay, let's try it on this instrument here. This is a this is a larger actually this one, this tef that I got in um, I think I got it in Izmir in Turkey. Um, it's it's a 12 inch diameter, the same as my uh, Cooperman hybrid tambourine. Okay, so it's a little bigger than a standard rick. With a drum like this, now you, you'll see this has got five sets of jingles, like the rick, but they're not evenly spaced. There is a, a larger gap between these two sets of jingles. So I would start, if your drum is similar to that, I would start by placing your hand in that spot. But 
you may find that the as you as you start trying to shake back and forth, it feels uneven in terms of the balance. Some of the jingles, especially on a handmade instrument, some of them on the same drum might be heavier. And I can even tell some of these are sort of thicker and heavier. So you might have to change where on the drum you're actually holding it. Okay, so experiment a little bit. I found for me, I, I mean, I started out like this, holding directly between these two sets of jingles, right, between these two lower ones. But I find the balance is a bit weird. So I hold it a little closer to this bottom set. So there's one set of jingles essentially on the bottom. On a larger size drum like this, you can opt for a thumb or for the more Rick style, doom. Whichever, okay? So immediately when I shake this back and forth, I can feel there's a lot more weight and it's harder to keep it from tipping from side to side. This is just practice. And it's a very splashy drum. The jingles are quite loud. Just trying to show you the movement. The important thing is that as you shake it back to the front, you make contact with your playing hand for the doom. So the shake and the doom are simultaneous. That second shake, right? Shake, shake, or shake, shake. It's simultaneous with the pop. This rhythm I'm playing is inspired by trance rhythms from North Africa, Morocco, or Tunisia, or Egypt. I think of them as things that you might hear as part of a Sufi ritual. So the important thing about this is that you have to be able to play in such a way, if it's a trance-oriented event that you're playing for, you need to be able to play this rhythm for a long time. So finding a way of holding the drum that's comfortable, making sure the weight is balanced, making sure you're not overplaying, trying to shake too much, you know, conserve your energy and make sure that you're thinking long term. Okay, there's one more example here. This is my Cooperman um, hybrid tambourine, they call it. This is the Todd Roach. Hi, Todd. This is a really cool drum. It does come with a bunch of different jingles of different sizes and different weights. And all these jingle slots here are, they have pins that are removable. So you can put as much jingle on it or as little as you want. I typically use this drum for kind of Kanjira style stuff because of this black suede head, you can actually bend the pitch. So I, I usually use this drum as like a super Kanjira, but it because of the jingles, it will also work for this type of um, transfer them. I like this also because the jingles are very light and they're very quiet, so you can play at lower volumes. You can still play fast, but you can play at a much quieter volume. And again, you have the option, the doom with the index finger, like you would play on the rick, or a more sort of um, Glenn Velez style thumb doom. Right? Shake doom, doom shake pa, doom shake doom, doom shake pa. I notice as I play this for a long time, my my instinct is to is to raise the drum up like I'm presenting it, and that just builds up more uh, tension here. So as long as I remember to stay centered, to keep the drum low and across from my belly rather than across sort of out from my chest, uh, I find it easier to, to sustain this rhythm for a longer period of time. Okay, here's one rhythmic variation on this trance rhythm. Rather than playing groupings of four, 
groups of three. So it's a dum dum pa dum dum pa. You're still shaking every other beat, which creates this sort of three over two cross rhythm, which I rather like. cycle starts over again every six beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this trance rhythm for the Rick. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would be great if you did. You can, if you're already subscribed, if you want to support the work I'm doing here more, you can join the channel, become a member of the channel for $5 Canadian a month. And if you would like to do a complete course in beginner frame drum, I have that on offer over at my Podia site. I'll leave a link in the description below and you can check that out. At any rate, I hope you will come back and join me for more videos about rhythm, drumming, and percussion.